climate change is definitely a crisis that could lead to extinction of life on this planet. All the science right now is suggesting that it is also reversible. And I'll share with you ideas on how climate change is in fact reversible. I will do a series on that. But first, we must change our attitude to what we call the environment. This earth is recycling as your body right now. Those trees, look at those trees. They are your lungs. If they didn't breathe, you wouldn't breathe. And if you didn't breathe, they wouldn't breathe. Look at that water out there. Water, it's recycling as your circulation. And right up there, look at the sky. Beyond the blue of sky and the dark of space is stardust recycling as the atoms in your body. So we have a personal body, we have a universal body. They're both equally ours. If you want to reverse climate change, the first thing is stop calling this the environment. It's your body. Just like this is your body. And we are all entangled as bodies, minds, universe, earth, wind, sky, water, trees, bugs, bees. It's all one thing. And it's not a thing. It's you, consciousness. Because you are the universe. Please sit quietly, close your eyes, and be comfortable in a chair with a backrest. Keep your feet on the ground, firmly planted. Keep your hands open in your lap, and just observe your breath. As you observe breath with your eyes closed, your experience of breath is just a sensation. A sensation arises, is experienced, and then it subsides. This is the nature of all experience. All experience is either a sensation or a perception or an image or a feeling or a thought that arises in our awareness, that is known in our awareness, that subsides in our awareness and in fact is made out of our awareness. Notice as you observe the breath that you can't hold on to it. If you try, you'll suffocate. This is the nature of all experience. No experience is graspable because all experiences arise and subside eternally in that which we call now. We can observe experiences and we can let them go. We cannot hold on to them. If we try to hold on to them, if we grasp, if we cling, even to a thought or anything, we experience the same quality that is called suffocation. Holding on causes suffocation. Letting go is freedom. So just observe your breath now. And now bring your awareness into your heart and mentally ask yourself, who am I? What am I? Don't try to answer the question, just settle into being. What is it that wants to know what am I? Am I the changing body? Am I the changing mind? Am I the changing experience of the world? 
or am I the silent witnessing awareness in which all experience is a ceaseless change? Who, what am I? And now ask the question, what do I want? What is my deepest desire? Don't try to answer the question. Just allow any sensation, image, feeling or thought to spontaneously come to you. What is my deepest desire? And now ask the third question. What is my purpose? Why do I do what I do? How can I serve? How can I express my unique skills and talents in the service of my fellow beings? And finally, ask the fourth question. What am I grateful for? When we practice gratitude, just by asking that question, then the sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts that arise from that question, they spontaneously open the door to abundance consciousness. What am I grateful for? Allowing any sensation, image, feeling, or thought to spontaneously come to you. And now let's go a little deeper into the meditation by slowly deconstructing our notion or our story of who we are. So mentally repeat to yourself your full name. So if I was doing it, I would say, I am Deepak Chopra, just a few times mentally. And now you can stop saying that. But just bring into your awareness all the experiences that are associated with that name, that name, that body, that form. So allow your awareness to fill up with all your concerns, all your worries, all your relationships, good and bad, all your deadlines, everything that's happening in your life right now these experiences are associated with who you think you are right now. I am Deepak Chopra. I am Don Doe. I am Mary Smith. You know, maybe just drop your last name and repeat your first name. I am Deepak. I'm John. I'm Mary, I'm Angela. And now bring into your awareness any memories that you have, joyful memories, happy memories, the best moments in your life. See if you can recall any moments of joy and wonder and playfulness, especially from your childhood. Allow sensations, images, feelings and thoughts from memories of a long time ago to come into your awareness. And now you can drop your name altogether. Just say, I am, without any memory, without any experience, without any form, without any belief attached to it. Just, I am, I am. And if you want, you can replace the I am now with the mantra, Aham, Aham, Aham. Just for a couple of minutes, Aham. When thoughts arise, or sensations arise, or images arise, or feelings arise, just go back to repeating the mantra, Aham, Aham, Aham. Now finally, drop the mantra, just rest in being, rest in awareness. 
exist as existence, awareness, being. This fundamental awareness, to be aware of being aware, it's the source of all thought, all feeling, all emotion, all images, all perceptions, all sensations, awareness. This is the whole mind. Awareness has no shape, but it gives rise to experiences of shape and color and form. Awareness has no sound, but it makes the experience of sound possible. Awareness is not in time, has no location, but allows us to have the experience of time and location. Awareness is who we are. The wisdom traditions of the world call it the true self. The true self that is never born, that is not subject to death. The true self, that which many spiritual traditions call the soul. In Eastern wisdom traditions, when we speak of the true self, we also know that it is ancient, it's unborn, that fire cannot burn it, that wind cannot dry it, weapons cannot shatter it that is not in space nor in time, but is our eternal home. So for the next two minutes, just rest in being, rest in awareness, rest in the self beyond all descriptions and all the roles you play as a human being. It may be your destiny to play an infinity of roles, but you're not the roles you play. You're the alert witness, awareness, consciousness, in which those roles come and go as part of the scenery. Resting in awareness is also called waking up waking up from the projections that we call mind, body, and the world. Just be aware of being aware. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. We start to realize slowly through meditation that the world is a projection of our own self. That if you don't like what is happening to us, we can do nothing by changing the world. Because the world is a projection of ourselves. Only an inner shift can change our experience of mind, body and world. And when that inner shift happens on a critical mass, one day, Perhaps we can hope for a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. Have a restful and rejuvenating weekend. I'll see you on the other side. Daily Breath is produced by Jan Cohn and Julie Magruder, edited by Andy Jaskiewicz, and composed by Henry Skaz Struck. Thank you to Bob Tabador, Karen Rangel, Serena Regan, and everyone who contributed to bring Daily Breath to life. Our show is created and executive produced by Jan Cohen, David Shadrach Smith, and me. I'm Deepak Chopra. Thank you for making Daily Breath a part of your day.